psychologist said it's actually deeper than that. It's really been sparking a debate about how do we understand the fact that there's the colonialization in a sense is embedded in some of our history. And as astronomers, we want to do good science that is good for humanity. And how do we address looking inward as a community the fact that our science may be delve into all of the those topics in today's show. We want your help. Tweet us. Hashtag Tag AJ Stream. Well, Neil, colleague. Sacred places, we each have our own. To many native Hawaiians, it's Mauna Kea, the White Mountain. The inactive volcano is where native Hawaiians' oral history began. It's where their ancestors buried their dead and looked to the stars for knowledge. Now, astronomers are looking up from Mauna Kea. With 13 telescopes, they're enjoying one of the best views of the universe and planning a new giant telescope. The 13-meter telescope, or TMT, will tower 18 stories high. Its mirror, the size of a basketball court, will look farther into the universe and see the potential for life beyond Earth. But that's if the TMT is built. Mass protests by native Hawaiians have blocked construction, and they say they're not opposed to science, but to erasing indigenous culture. So with us to talk about this in Oahu, Paul Coleman is an ast astrophysicist with the University of Hawaii. In Waimea, Hawaii, E. Kalani Flores is a native Hawaiian and Mauna Kea activist. In Seattle, Keolu Fox is a Hawaiian scientist and a PhD candidate at the University of Washington. And in Seoul, Alex Lockwood is an astrophysicist. So, hello everybody, it's good to have you here. Um, let me start with this idea of the exciting prospect of having a giant telescope on the top of Mauna Kea. What gets astronomers, astronomers so worked up about this? A little video that I borrowed from Alex Lockwood, who's amongst our lineup. This is Alex talking about why she loves what she does, and she's right up here on Mauna Kea. Because nothing beats being up here, being so much closer to the heavens, to the stars, to the sources that I'm interested in, to just the unimaginable, and unimaginable scales and incredible sources. And I am fortunate enough to get to work up here. Yeah, this is my life. Alex, I can see you surrounded by domes there, different telescopes out there on Mauna Kea. But this TMT is a beast. It's huge. What is it going to do for the science community? Oh, it's got incredible implications for science. Um, it, it is much bigger. And what that means for science is so much more information. Um, it's the same as when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't see anything in the dark uh -huh. and then you give your eyes a few minutes to adjust, you get more light in your eyes and you see more detail. It's the same thing with a telescope. Um, this guy is going to be almost 10 times uh, as big as the ones that are currently on top of Mauna Kea, yeah. which provide us incredible views, but with information coming in 10 times as much detail, right. we're going to see new planets and we're going to see new parts of galaxies. Um, there's there's huge developments that could be made using using this telescope. And we saw from your video that there were a number of telescopes already on Mauna Kea. There are actually 13 there already. Why is 13 not yes. enough? Um, again, it's about the size. Um, when you have all of these giant mirrors that collect light uh -huh. working together, you get so much more information. Um, the ones that are there now are great and have done great science, but we need to make bigger telescopes to really push the limits of, of what we can explore in space. And Paul, you heard Alex say that this is about incredible views. There's also another view here on Twitter. This is Nur Swan, and she says, this telescope will greatly enhance a better understanding of the universe, another giant leap into the past, and the future of the universe's existence. And Paul, of course, that all sounds really good, but can you break that down for the layperson? What is it that we're talking about here? Taking us back to the Big Bang, explaining how that happened? Describe what it is that we could find out. 
Well, this telescope, if everything works out correctly in terms of sensitivities, it will uh, allow us to look right up to the edge of the universe that we could ever possibly see. Um, the universe starts with a big bang and for a little while it's impossible to see anything in the universe because it's, it's like a smoke filled room. Uh, photons are traveling from one particle to the next getting absorbed and then re-emitted so you really can't see across the room. But as the universe continues to expand then pretty soon the smoke dissipates and you're able to see across the universe. And so there's a certain uh, time in the universe or distance from the Big Bang or time since the Big Bang uh, with beyond that we cannot see and the TMT will allow us to look right up to that limit so it literally will get us to be able to see as much of the universe as is possible Kelly, you're, you're a scientist. You can hear sort of the passion, the excitement about this TMT, this giant telescope that's heading up to Mauna Kea. As a scientist yourself, do you, do you sort of feel uh, you understand why scientists are so exciting about bigger, better, more information? Do, do you, does that resonate at all with you? Sure, it, it resonates because this is going to be a paradigm shift in a type of disruptive technology that's going to yield higher resolution data. But the people that benefit from this, it's a handful of people that are likely going to make careers and receive tenure track positions by publishing in Nature and Science. And it's at the expense of indigenous knowledge, indigenous rights, our culture and, and our land. So it's a very sensitive subject. But as a scientist, I understand that publications are the currency and you know, it's definitely a hard juxtaposition. This is not, this is not, uh, it's not an easy choice, certainly as an indigenous scientist like uh, Dr. Uh, Coleman and I. Alex? I, I disagree. Um, I, I, I disagree that there's only a handful of people who are using this. Um, it, there, astronomy inspires people. It really does. Um, and, you know, I've spoken to many, many people on the Big Island who love the fact that there's an astron astronomical community, who love, you know, the lectures that are given at these observatories, who benefit from not, you know, the, both the tourism, but more importantly, what what is gained in scientific understanding. And, you know, hundreds, I would dare say thousands, millions of people are inspired by astronomy and what that means for the, you know, the creativity that is inspired and the innovation for our society. It, there's a much, much larger impact um, for humanity than for the handful of scientists who are going to do science there. Um, uh, Alex, with all due respect, uh, you mm -hmm. have a lot to gain personally from this as an astrophysicist, but there are many other types of science. For example, I am involved in human genome sequencing, which is a, a form of biology. There's a lot of momentum moving in that direction. That's inspirational at, as well. This isn't about uh, you know personally inspiring people. This is about preserving a culture that is sort of, you know, honestly, we're struggling to keep our culture alive and this is one of our you know this is our generation our opportunity and we're we're having a renaissance in our culture and our language and so on so by putting up this telescope there's a lot at risk right Kaylu and Alex let me just bring in some of the community thoughts as we're having this discussion Malika well they hear that disagreement right there and then uh, they answer with this this is Narissa on Facebook and she says why is there such an outcry against the TMT well there were 13 as Femi mentioned earlier that's the number of telescopes currently on the mountain 13 chances to do the right thing with little regard for the environment or the community that holds Mauna Kea sacred. And on the back of that, Ashtant says that is the issue. These scientists say they only want to explore the stars when in reality there's a bigger telescope being built in Chile. So Kalani, do you see the issue here? And, and why do you believe that Mauna Kea is uh, the spot that uh, astronomers have chosen? I would say aloha no tātoa paoroa from Oko Kiawe Island of Hawaii. We'd like to say greetings to all of you out there. So when you get to the island, the last comment about the 13, the, the 13 telescopes were built there with, with a big disregard for Native Hawaiian culture and practices and for our sacred mountain. And, and it's basically been rubber stamped in this whole process. When I say rubber stamped, everything's really politically 
motivated and business charged. And so all the permits that they were allowed for some of the for the, some of those observatories to be built don't meet the criteria to be built in a conservation district. And some of those telescopes were built without a permit and were given the permit after the fact. And so after 13 telescopes later, with this one, it's not just this one. People have been protesting and trying to stop what was happening to our sacred mountain long ago, but our the native voices, the native voices of the Hawaiians have been systematically ignored. Kalani. And, 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 and uh, Kalani, <laughs> Kalani, yeah. that's... Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll, that's I'll, not I'll go really... second. You're my guest. Sorry, that that's not really true. I mean, native Hawaiians have been a, in a part of this process from the very beginning. Now, perhaps the um, original taking care of the mountain was dan done poorly, but ever since I think 1999, uh, with the state audit, which was forced, um, the the community has tried its best to both include, be inclusive of the many voices. And mind you, there are many voices who uh, have different opinions about what levels of uh, kapu should be applied applied to this mountain. I don't believe in any case have have voices or people <clears throat> been kept from uh, being a part of this. Paul, let me just, well, let voices, me just, uh, let maybe, me... The, maybe it just implies that the voices ha have been heard, but they've been ignored. And this has oh. goes back to it. It goes back to 1880s into to 1980s into the 1970s when it's, when it's first being proposed. So Native Kalani, voices I, have been can ignored. I just, well, can yeah. I ask you just think... to give me a pause for a moment? Because I right. think there's something that you know that a lot of our international audience won't be, won't be up to date with. And that is about Mauna Kea. What does that actually mean for some members of Hawaiian community. Why is it so special? Why is there an argument about putting telescopes on this specific mountain? I think that's really key to this conversation. What's special about it? Our mountain, is, our mountain is also known as Mauna Awakea, Mountain of Sky Father. That's the ancient name of the ancient ones who first came to these islands. And even before our people came to these islands, there are divine and ancient ones who still stand on that mountain, our ancestral guardians. It's a holy place, it's a place of reverence. It is the same as you would compare Mount Fuji in Japan or Mount Sinai in other places. So These can you put any mountains. could you put anything on it then, Kalani, or would there be no buildings whatsoever? How I am just trying to get the level of how sacred it is or how sacred it should it, be treated. It, it, it's so sacred that our, our even our ancient uh, even our early Hawaiian peoples, our ancient chiefs and our and our priests, they never did put a huge temple or anything on top of the yeah. summit because they understood the summit was sacred. Alex, so, how do you respond to the that Western, then? And Western man has put it, put their, instead put their things on our summit. Uh, Alex, so, so you, I, you've done our, amazing uh, discoveries up there that you, you found using the telescopes on the K. How do you feel when you say Kalani, it's so sacred, you shouldn't have anything up there? For me, if, if we sort of understand our mutual goals of appreciating each other's culture and appreciating what what we can do together for me the heavens are very sacred to me um, not only as a scientist but just as someone who really respects the great beyond um, and the pot I absolutely understand that there are certain places that should be revered and Mauna Kea is one of them it's beautiful um, and because of that, and because of where it's located, and probably one of the things that inspired it to be so holy was the great heights that it reaches. And, and the, that's the reason that we love it as an strong astronomical community. Uh, and perhaps there's a way to make the conversation more about how do we more mutually respect each other in the building process and in the outcomes um, so that we can both benefit from what can be gained by reaching more of the heavens. Hey, Olu, I see you itching to get in, but I want to read you a taste of what people online are saying about this, because I think you could sure, probably sure. relate. This is Dandelion. We asked her, what does the mountain mean to you? And she said, it's like visiting my grandparents in heaven and feeling so much love that one just has to cry. And so then she went on to say that the problem she has with the telescope is that this is total colonization. Hawaii already knows how to read the sky. For our audience that may have no idea what she means about colonization, what right. what does that mean to you, and, and how do those two things relate? So for our international audience, I kind of want to take uh, a historical turn, a contextual turn, and just imagine 
Okay, first of all, we have two UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Hawaii. One is Haleakala, and the other is Volcano National Park. Now, for whatever reason, Mauna Kea is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But imagine the holiest place you can imagine. Al-Aqsa, the Wailing Wall, Mecca, uh, these types of places that have spiritual reverence in these communities. And imagine building the largest building you can imagine on top of King David's Temple Mount, for example, right? That's the type of spiritual connection and attachment that our community has to these. Now, in terms of a history of colonization, we really need to look at the facts. And Dr. Coleman and, and Kalani both alluded to the, this earlier, but it's that it's that the land was illegally seized. Our queen was imprisoned in her own palace. You know, this was in an effort to get cash crops such as sugarcane and pineapple, which are synonymous with colonization. And, you know, it's also a strategic military position. Do the math. Like this is this is a history of colonization. This is how oppressed people act when they're, when you know. Look at Louis the Sixteenth. He got beheaded because he wasn't treating the community in France right. We're protesting peacefully. We we know our history. We're not Luddites. We we have a rich history of science. You know, uh, it, it's just it's strange and it's it's uh it's unfortunate. Let me just play you a clip. This is um, a poor case. She's Kalani's wife. So this was April, beginning of April, on a protest on Mauna Kea. Um, and this is what she had to say. Have a listen to this. Everyone here, everyone here knows that 18 stories doesn't belong on this mountain. Everybody knows 18 stories should not be on a water aquifer. I don't care what anyone says about astronomy. We are talking about our watershed, you guys back there. We are talking about our water. If you don't so, Kalani, Alex just mentioned maybe we can, that there can be a coming together of minds, the scientific community and the indigenous Hawaiian community. Is that something that you would even contemplate? And, and what happens with the 13 meter telescope in that coming together of minds? It's interesting, Alex mentioned that our cultures maybe can work together. What, what has happened is our culture has been over dominated by cultures from outside of Hawaii and other cultures and other foreign countries and other foreign entities and other foreign corporations have come here with a disregard for our sacred space. And we as a people still have a reverence and aloha for our land and our sacred places. And we must, and that's why we're, we're not protesting, we're protecting. We're, we're standing up and protecting what is dear and sacred to us. And despite what everybody else wants to be imposed upon us, we say enough is enough. 13 has already been dis caused massive destruction and desecration to our sacred mountain, and enough is enough. And if well, you want to start I'd, taking I'd like them to, down, that'll be better yet. Paul? I'd like to interject that while you feel very strongly about this, I have no histories in my Hawaiian lineages where people have said that Mauna Kea is in any way more sacred than than any other part of land on the islands. So I think this leads us to the, the point that every single Hawaiian has to make up their own mind, whether or not the kapu is as strong as you are suggesting it is, and whether that means that we cannot build anything on this mountain. Um, we need to take the road down, we need to take all of the structures, all the inter, inter stuff that's up there, we need to just get rid of it all. Well, but I think this is idea. therefore going to be this is going to be a decision of every single Hawaiian, not just the people like us who can uh, reach the media, but it, apparently if it's going to be this, we have to go with the democratic process because we don't really have elite anymore. And so every single Hawaiian has to decide whether or not they can in, enforce this kapu or whether or not they can work around it. Okay, and you know that us Hawaiians, we've always worked our way around the kapu. If there's something that keeps us from actually forwarding the Hawaiian goals, we will set aside the kapu for a little while or permanently. Okay, so well, this is something that we all have to just decide. Yeah. And we, I think, we, it's correct. We have to work together in that way. But the majority of Hawaiians, if you see throughout the islands of Hawaii, are pro, have been holding signs, rallying. And there's very few people who have been standing up for the 
this telescope in Hawaii. I'm willing to. I'm willing to submit worldwide. it to a vote. I'm willing to have it a, have a vote. Let's have a vote. And uh, in fact, this is so this but, directly. But, but let me say, gentlemen, let me just show you. Let me just AI. show you a, a headline here, because um, I know the community wants to jump in just really quickly before the, we end this main part of the show. Headline here: Supreme Court in Hawaii grants application to hear telescope case. So it's going to be in the Supreme Court. It is in the Supreme Court right now, not going to a vote. Let's just check out to see what Malika has. Malika, well, picking up on that and, and where we go from here. Mm -hmm. Online, uh, there was uh, this was tweeted at us. This was a protest that happened 7 a.m. Hawaii time this morning. Many people stand for today, stop the desecration of our mountain. So people are continuing to protest. But as an alternative, um, Keolu, there was this tweet from Emma who says, what could happen is an offering of community STEM programs involving the telescope program, perhaps, make it a part of the community, give something in return. And I know there is money for that. So do you think that that's enough, Keolu? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it's quite the consolation prize in reality. Um, there are many types of knowledge, right? There's westernized knowledge. There's the type of knowledge that I'm receiving right now in this uh, uh, graduate school, and that's completely westernized. And then there's indigenous knowledge, and indigenous knowledge is completely different. You can't set up a scholarship fund for higher education so that people can absorb that knowledge. However, there are groups in Hawaii like the Hokulea Worldwide Voyage and so on that are uh, approaching you know the dissemination of that and i think that's important do young hawaiians need to see people like dr coleman and myself and all types of leaders uh letting our indigenous knowledge and our indigeneity inform the types of scientific questions we answer with westernized tools yeah i would say i would say that is the case but there's a fine balance you know i only speak for myself but I really, I really think that there has been just a lack of transparency on the policy end. And, you know, we, we could have not been as impulsive and Caleb, considered other in options. In the last two minutes of the show, uh, what do you want to happen to the 30-meter telescope? My, me personally? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I, I think... Uh, I think that the powers that be, the consortia, a lot of the people that are making decisions yeah. should probably talk to some angel VC like Elon Musk, for example, yeah. or Larry Ellison, who probably needs some good PR in Hawaii right now, and have him match that $1.54 billion and put that telescope in the sky. And I know there are some problems with adaptive optics, and it might be a little more difficult, but the reality is, is that putting so, a telescope on land isn't so going to produce data. you don't want it on Mauna Kea, sufficient. basically. Um, Alex, TMT, what do you want to happen to it? I, I think it needs to be built there. It, uh, uh -huh. I, I, a lot of that, the conservation of the culture and the knowledge and the history and, and doing helping the indigenous people make sure that those things are passed on and uh -huh. figuring out other ways to preserve the land uh, on behalf of the indigenous people uh, is, is something important and should be part of the conversation. But... Um, it's not. It's very not easy to put a, a space telescope um, operation maintenance, all of that stuff. So it's not just as easy as put, a, put Alex it in space Lockwood, and we can do it. Kailu Fox, Kalani so. Flores, and Paul Coleman. They're all coming to the post show at stream.aljazeera.com. Stream Science Week continues in a moment. And thank you very much for watching. Tomorrow we're looking at the impact of fishing and overfishing. Um, where does the fish on your plate come from? Stream Science continues in uh, the post show. See you soon. Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking about science, spirituality, and the space in between. Let's get right back to this. I want to show you something that went vi viral in the science world. Um, so we have here um, an email that circulated, and I'm going to scroll down here to show you the email. 
um, and it says, dear, it's from Sandy Faber, uh, dear friends, the 30 meter telescope is in trouble, attacked by a horde of native Hawaiians who are lying about the impact of the project on the mountain. Paul, do you think this could be part of the problem that, that scientists are not maybe being empathetic with what really Mauna Kea is really about? But you are also native Hawaiian as well. Did, this was probably, at the very least, a poorly worded email. Maybe? Yes, at the very least, a poorly yeah. worded email. Can you, can you give email. us a bit of the backstory without getting, without losing us who've just seen this email? What, what happened and why would somebody write native Hawaiians, uh, a horde oh. of native Hawaiians? Why, why would they write that? It, it's, it's obvious that they've been influenced by the flash mob aspect of the uh, resistance, which has just sort of splashed forward in the last few months. Um, but they are not thinking that, of course, there's been resistance throughout the process. There's been discussions, there's been long talks, you know, eight years, seven years of gathering information, listening to the sides. Uh, so it's clear that in any debate or any kind of argument, there's always going to be the people who are most easily led by what they see in the in the you know frontline media and so they just they just react and unfortunately scientists we don't have a we don't have an automatic cultural sensitivity knob that we turn on and say oh wait this is not the right thing to say right. in fact we're kind of well known for sticking our foot in our mouth right and is, do, you know, do, do you think that's the metaphor this for this entire debate uh, Kaolu that um, maybe scientists are uh, might not be the best at understanding that there's the science out there and everybody's like whoa the science as they're walking over maybe people's indigenous histories is that a possibility uh I, I, from a technical point of view i would say that you should leave science to scientists let us distill the knowledge to the non-technical public that's that's something that we do struggle with um but as far as the horde comment like we're all Hawaiian on this show, excluding Alex here. Do we look like a horde? Do I mean that? That's just, just, just. It's upsetting. I mean, I don't even, don't even know what to say to that. I feel so horny sometimes. <laughs> Alex, I, 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 well, I don't know who sent that email, and I hope that it was one of those things that's taken out of context as things on the internet easily are and shared all right um, I, 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 sometimes though right. when, when somebody says a horde of native hawaiians there's there's only so much context you need in terms of how you refer to some people right alex because that out of context I, is, is is the excuse for everything bad that anybody's emails ever you know ever anybody yeah. ever written in an email but it's what did you want to add people, people who haven't been to hawaii don't appreciate what you know what the inherent beauty of the place is, and what the you know the passion of, of the the people for their culture. Yeah. Uh, and so, that scientists or non scientists, I don't know if you can if you appreciate that if you haven't been there, um, or really spent time there. Um, and even then, I I don't I wouldn't say that I completely understand the nuances or. Um, but I think there's. But what about this main point, though, about back. not really appreciating the scientists, not really appreciating the indigenous communities that they sometimes have to interact with, or maybe they, they're just I, not that's interacting why, with them. I mean, as Paul said, we've had years of speaking, you know, having these conversations and, and, and doing the background research before trying to, to build this telescope. And I hope that they only continue and that the fact that Mauna Kea is sacred for all, all of these people, um, scientifically and culturally uh, and historically, maybe that encourages the conversation and opens these doors for for more communication between scientists and, and people and about the culture and the sensitivities. Kalani, I, I mean, I, I see 13 telescopes right now up on Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea. Do, do you feel that there's any way that you could actually win this battle? History's not on your side. It's been very, very difficult, but we believe that there's a shift in consciousness around the world with people and standing yeah. up and for their land. We see that I don't know more, and we send out our a lot to our relations all in throughout the the continents there, and people throughout the world are standing up for justice and for what's not correct and what's not appropriate. And what the the comment that was mentioned, what the reason people actually got arrested, there were 31 that got arrested and blockading the road, and the reason why they blockaded the road uh -huh. is they're trying to 
they're trying to start construction. And as you pointed out, the, the legal challenges are still in court. The final court is our state Supreme Court, and it still hasn't made a final decision. Yet the TMT International Observatory pushed ahead with construction, even though there's a legal challenge in court on the on the, the, the validity of the permit that was issued. And so we're saying, why are you moving ahead in court when it's still in, in why are you moving ahead with construction while it's still in court? Yeah. But to all but to all people, I think that throughout the world are are standing up and. We ask them to stand with us, and we are Mauna Kea, and that, and that statement alone says yeah. that we are all part of this earth, and we, we thank everyone who has been supportive of that. Mahalo. See, Keilu, I, I get the feeling as I, as I looked at the situation here with the TMT that the protesters or the protectors, it's not about this particular telescope. It's about years and years and years of losing the battle as an indigenous community against other people coming in and using Hawaii. Uh, did I did I misread that, or do, is that what you're you're feeling here? That it's a it's a bigger movement than just a big telescope. Correct. I, I completely agree with you. The mm. the TMT is a, a symbol of uh, a historic or systematic oppression. We're you know the sad thing is we're not the only indigenous community that is dealing with this situation, and you know we mobilized using social media just like uh, you've seen with the Arab Spring and Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter and uh, most recently Baltimore and this is a true pulse on what indigenous people want and don't want and actually I saw a, a Wall Street Journal article showing that more minority populations use Instagram and a lot of people were were alerted via Instagram so I mean this is a, a true kickback and a pulse on how our community feels about the development and construction of a telescope which represents a larger systematic oppression of indigenous people so then do you think we can change the conversation to be about what it's about instead of about this telescope um, because the opportunities from the telescope are so incredible but there is i agree this just kind of systematic oppression of people who aren't given the voice because of inherent money power whatever issues uh, so how do we change the conversation to be about something bigger and really bring the important issues on the table about respecting people and respecting their needs? Um, I, I agree with you, and that is exactly what we're doing right now on the stream. We are talking about this issue. We are having a conversation, and that's the most important part, and people are going to watch all over the world, 280 million viewers, you guys said. So let's do this. Mm -hmm. This is our story. You know, do what you can, read the literature, support the community. If you think this is wrong, like we do. Let me go to one of those 280 million <laughs> viewers <laughs> and see what they have to say. Out, the hordes um, of our viewers. Right. Well, they, they say? actually have an answer uh, right. to the, the question that, yes. um, uh, that Alex raised. This is Sarah. She sent us this video comment. She has one suggestion for how to uh, better change this conversation. So have a listen to this. A way for scientists to respect indigenous culture is to make sure that our scientific spaces are safe for um, indigenous folks who pursue Western science. So um, our educational spaces and our professional spaces tend to be designed um, for white folks to feel very comfortable. And there are a lot of steps that we could take to make those spaces feel safe and comfortable um, for indigenous scientists uh, and scientists of color. And I saw Paul nodding his head. I'm sure all of our uh, guests can agree with that one. So thank you so much to Paul, Kalani, Keolu, and Alex as well for being part of this conversation. If you want to see what happens next, a couple of hashtags you should follow. Malika, what's the one that you'd recommend? Uh, the best one is Stream Science. Okay, Stream Science. Mm -hmm. And um, we will keep you up to date on this story. Thank you very much, guests, for being part of the very first Stream Science program of this week. On our next show, have you thought about where the fish on your plate comes from? We'll discuss overfishing and the far-reaching impacts it's having. Until then... We'll see you online.